All right, the Goliath team is back from doing live training at conferences, and we're always iterating, trying to make our training process uh, smoother, less painful. And one of the most painful things is getting the build tools onto your machine in the first place. And Chris, I think I think we've cracked this nut now. We figured out maybe the least painful way is to not put the tools on your machine at all. I think that's right, Mike. Yeah, I think uh, this is going to come as no surprise for anyone that like, you know, gigabytes of downloads and installs and things like that. Uh, it, it takes a while and it kind of stinks. Um, and so we're hoping to get people to Blinky faster uh, on connected platforms. We want them to be able to connect to the Goliath cloud. And we've already shown some of this stuff. We think we already have a pretty decent starting point here, right? Where we have all the documentation all in one place. It's very straightforward to go all the way through. You can uh, not only get background, but then you can go through the build tools locally on your machine, go through Zephyr, go through um, actually using other pieces of Zephyr like IO and uh, connecting to the, the Goliath cloud. But beyond this, and this is training.goliath.io, beyond this, uh, that first piece, what's been surprising is that we would be in in-person training. And because you're trying to have gigabytes of data times however many people you have at the training, uh, it starts to get kind of uh, be a hassle, right? And so we're trying to basically, like Mike said, we're trying to put the tools on someone else's machine. So in the past, we've written about Git Pod, which is an example uh, uh, service that does that sort of thing. And we are trying some other things. But today we're talking about Chasm, K-A-S-M. And that is a uh, basically a virtualized container host that allows you to um, use a desktop through a browser. It might be a little bit heavy duty, but we think that it, it actually presents a pretty fast uh, interface. Mike, what were some of the, uh, the other things that you've seen at training that kind of held us up? Yeah, so I think the surprising thing is uh, not like the difficulty of installing a cross-platform. Like we iron that out, you can do instructions for that. But when it comes time for people to just do a Git pull of like, I don't know, 20 or 30 different repositories, like it just, you, you don't have the pipe for it. Like you think about conference Wi-Fi or even like trying to store files locally was difficult. We thought about passing around a USB thumb drive and something feels a little bit icky security wise about that. And I mean, ultimately what we're doing is we have these mag tags and they uh, run Zephyr. They can connect to Goliath. You can send data back and forth. And so we want to get people a feel for like what Zephyr is all about, like what it looks like to, to port it to different devices, what device management looks like and what the features are of Goliath. And so, <laughs> I mean, literally two thirds of our training time has been set up like getting those tool chains to run. And so if yeah. I think people are just going to be a lot happier if they can turn something on and type, you know, West build and then uh, have it pop out the other side. And it looks like you've actually gotten there already with Chasm. That's right. So this is uh, this is a DigitalOcean container that I uh, stood up. Basically, there's a pre-installed image on there for Chasm. Uh, I had I forget how we found Chasm initially, uh, but we you know we've been looking around for tools like this. You know, containerized based things. Uh, there's other things out there like GitHub Code Spaces that we're looking into as well. We're excited about. Uh, and so this one actually pops you into a visual uh, desktop, which might be more than people think they need, but actually to have it replicating kind of the home setup for when you do to the tools at home. Uh, we kind of like that. So this is what the backend interface looks like here. And then we can launch different uh, different containers here. We could just have Visual Studio Code show up in the browser. That's common on GitHub right now. I think if you hit period, I think it pops up a, a VS Code instance. Uh, you could just do a terminal uh, or you could do an entire training workspace. And so that's what I'm actually going to show here. So we actually pulled down this image, which is one of our blog images, and we pre-installed all of the Goliath dependencies and Zephyr dependencies in here. So what that looks like is a Docker file here. This is all the uh, the basic stuff you need to run on Chasm and actually have a desktop show up in someone's browser. Uh, but then once we have that and we're ready to go here, then we're just literally following the uh, the install that's on docs.goliath.io. And so if you go to docs.goliath.io, uh, I actually did NCS, the Nordic Semiconductor version of Zephyr, but it's basically just all of the commands here. I think I did it as, because I didn't, uh, I'm not running a virtual environment anymore. I'm just doing, doing globally because it's just this container that's there. Now, one thing to think about in terms of containers is I'm basically booting this compiled version of all this Zephyr stuff in here. 
I have a containerized version of all this stuff pre-installed. If Mike logs into Chasm and he also starts up a new container, he will not see any of the changes that I've done. And that's really critical as well because you wanna basically have like a fresh start each and every time you're starting from here. And so that's what happened. I basically, if you go into how we normally build programs here, uh, you could see that in the home directory, we have Goliath NCS workspace. This is from the Goliath SDK. If I go into the Goliath workspace, you'll see there is no build directory. Oh, there is a build directory. Oh, you know what? I ran this machine earlier. Normally there is no build directory. <laughs> I'll black that but out that's later. another good point is that, that you can come back to your saved state, but that's it right. doesn't interfere with my saved state. And so if that's you right. break for lunch on your training session, you can pick up again. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Um, so I'm going to remove that build uh, directory here. Uh, and maybe we can have Mike uh, do, maybe we can do a quick break and we'll show uh, another instance of the workspace after this is all done. But from here, right, normally you'd have to go and you're starting from a terminal, you have to go and install all the West dependencies, all of the uh, SDK stuff, all of the tool chain to actually go and build an ARM based component. That's already done for you here. And so if we go and we do just a build, uh, sorry, uh, West build, and West is already installed. That's another another key point. So that's the meta tool that helps us to actually build these things. So West build, I'm going to just grab an easy one. This is the NRF52840 base device from layered semiconductor that we did in the open thread stuff. And then I go and I say I want to actually compile uh, Zephyr samples, basic, basic, Blinky. Now it's going to just go and build it. So basically, Boom. you start up a new a new container and it starts to build right away and that is that is an experience that we've been looking for for a long time now some of you watching this are going to say well i've already known how to do that i know how to do containers and i maybe run that but doing this at scale for training and having multiple people do it that's new for us and also to have visual tools like this having vs code installed in here which we'll have which we have on a, a different workspace here having uh having a, a terminal having a desktop being able to then go and download stuff one thing that we've been running into that's a current problem and we'd love to hear from our community on this, is we need to actually go and move the dot, uh, the binary file into this download folder, which I've done already. And then we need to go and we can download it here. So this is actually in the container. You can see that I have this kind of little, this menu here and I can click this and it'll go and download the Zephyr binary for a third time. Um, and so that's something that we're still looking into. We'd love to hear from people if they have done this before, how they uh, work with this sort of stuff. We're looking into web USB and similar, but, uh, um, yeah, so basically we have kind of a, a unique interface here ready to go at any point. For more information about the experiments we try here at Goliath in the DevRel department or things that we're trying out on our desks with different pieces of hardware, or if you'd like to hook up your own IoT device to the Goliath cloud, check out blog.goliath.io or check us out on Discord. That's goliath.io slash Discord. Our forum, forum.goliath.io. You can always reach us on Twitter. It's goliath underscore IoT. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.